is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about tropical revolving storm. Any storm is a big challenge for a ship's master. Avoiding actions to be taken. How to know whether there is storm in vicinity. What are the conditions basically essential. Which area the storms develop. All these things we will try to discuss in uh, various videos of mine about tropical revolving storm. But in this video basically I want to talk about cyclogenesis. For a master, you know, uh, it is so important that he comes to know about the presence of storm. He might be the first one to experience the storm. And if he is the first one to experience the storm, as per chapter 5, safety of navigation, it is mandatory for him. Right? He is obliged to, uh, he is bound to rather, he is bound to transmit the uh, message in respect of the danger message in respect of the uh, possibility of storm in vicinity if he has not received any uh, weather warning in respect of that storm. Like he is supposed to transmit it by all available means at his disposal to the shipping in vicinity and competent authorities. He can inform the ships in vicinity and by competent authority means he can inform Coast Guard, he can inform Port Control, VTS, VTMS or uh, Metrological Office who is transmitting the messages like he can give the pertinent, the required information to uh, these people so that uh, a general safety is enhanced. The pressure that is given by aneroid barometer has to be corrected you know by applying the fixed or index error which might be given by the metrological office and then increased to the sea level pressure depending on your height of height. Now that pressure if it is fallen by about 5 millibars below the normal and the wind speed which are prevailing have increased to about 6 before scale then there is a good chance that there is TRS in the vicinity. The center of the TRS can be found out uh, by facing the wind and in northern hemisphere you can say about 10 to 11 points on your right and the reverse is there for the southern hemisphere. For a master it is so important to detect the TRS in vicinity and then get away if he's got good speed whether he is forward of the TRS or he is behind the TRS get away so that pressure tends to rise to normal and the wind speed reduces to less than a Beaufort scale 6. Change of wind direction and fall of barometric pressure. In addition to this you will have the swell traveling from storm center you know radially outwards the waves are transmitted from the storm center as if this is not bad enough you will have threatening sky with thunderstorms and lightning. Tropical cyclones are categorized according to what is the wind speed close to the storm center. For example, tropical storm has wind speed between 34 to 47 knots. Severe tropical storm has winds from 48 to 63 knots. Typhoons and super typhoons, they have wind speed up to 128 knots or more than 128 knots respectively. Now following conditions favor formation of Cyclogenesis, what are the conditions which favor the formation of cyclone? Low level relative vorticity, a strong correlation exists between the location of tropical storm and large values of low level vorticity. In a developing tropical disturbance, the effect of intensive convection is to generate a convergent low level wind field as the air flows towards the convection. This convergence produces an increase of relative vorticity. Vorticity is any twisting motion in troposphere. A counterclockwise spin in northern hemisphere will give positive vorticity. The regions of low level positive vorticity are associated with enhanced upward motion, cumulus convection and release of latent heat. The increased heating leads to increase in horizontal convergence which in turn increases the relative vorticity. A pre-existing atmospheric circulation. Circulation as you know in northern hemisphere is anti-clockwise. Why anti-clockwise circulation? As you know the wind blows from high pressure area to low pressure area. Now this is because of the gradient force, the difference in pressure. Now uh, as the wind blows from high pressure to low pressure, 
you know, in northern hemisphere, there is a tendency to turn to right because of Coriolis. As a result of gradient force and Coriolis force, we have anti-clockwise circulation around the depression in northern hemisphere and the reverse is there in southern hemisphere. Coriolis parameter is very, very important. That is the reason the storm cannot generate very close to the equator. A minimum distance of 500 kilometers or uh, roughly we can say uh, from 5 degrees to 8 degrees. You know, this is the area where the storm uh, generation should take place, cyclogenesis should take place. The next condition is weak vertical wind shear. Low vertical wind shear is essential for a disturbance to develop as the latent heat generated during the convective process is not advected. Advection means the transfer of heat horizontally in the atmosphere away from the circulation field. The wind speed must change slowly with the height through the troposphere. No more than 10 meters per second between the surface and an altitude of about 10,000 meters. The fifth condition is sea surface temperature. A threshold temperature of 26.5 degree centigrade is a must. If the sea water temperature is less than 26.5, the storm center cannot develop. The water is not warm enough because the warmth of the water, the heat of water, you know, and continued maintenance of the heat is very important constituent of a cyclogenesis. Now, the sixth point is degree of convective instability. Since deep cumulus convection is essential for mature tropical cyclones, strong convective instability is associated with tropical cyclogenesis. This means the atmosphere, the atmosphere outside must cool quickly enough with the height to support the formation of deep convective clouds. Seventh and the last point is large value of relative humidity in lower and middle troposphere particularly the middle troposphere if the relative humidity is not high it is bad for cyclogenesis. We talked about the various factors which are favorable for cyclogenesis. We also talked about how important it was for the master to know that there is a storm in vicinity and to tell everybody if he has not received any weather warning what are the indications of an approaching TRS you know etc. Now it is also important for the master to know like uh, he is in poleward semicircle or he is in the equator world semicircle because if it is a semicircle which is on the pole side it is called dangerous semicircle and if it is a semicircle which is towards the equator it is called navigable semicircle before we know what is dangerous and what is navigable semicircle let us understand what is veering and what is backing veering means clockwise change of wind direction for a stationary observer and backing means anti-clockwise change of wind direction for a stationary observer now whether you are in northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere if the wind is veering that means you are in a northern semicircle whether you are in northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere and backing when it happens it means that you are in the southern semicircle whether you are in northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere like I will show you uh, an example of where you will understand see this is the equator and this is the approximate path of cyclone and this is how the winds are now if there is a stationary observer here he will first face these winds in the clock it is this direction right and then he encounters these wave uh, he encounters this wind that means the clock goes to this direction and later on he will experience this wind that means the clock hand goes like this so this clockwise change of wind direction puts you in northern semicircle that is the rule right so uh, uh, in my next video, we will talk about avoiding action. We will talk about the, the construction of TRS, the various parts of these TRS and the wind and the pressure that prevails in these parts.